the grass is always greener. Hi, I'm Ian Roof and welcome to Get Gardening. And in this short video, we're gonna look a bit about lawns, a bit about these wonderful green spaces that predominantly many of us have at home. Now, of course, I know some of us are going towards rougher lawns and wild meadows, and that's perfectly great, but there's something quite nice if you've got the time and the space to have something which is beautifully green and wonderfully well kept. And here we are on one of the main formal lawns at East Ruston, and there are four of these formal lawns that are rather well looked after and rather well manicured. And if you want something like this, which is looking pretty green and pretty healthy, and we're in the middle of July at the moment, then there are a few things you need to do to your own lawns at home. One thing is spring and autumn feeding. Now these lawns get a lot of wear and tear, but we predominantly do a spring and an autumn feed, and the spring feed promotes growth at the top of the grass, so the actual sward, the green bit, and the autumn feed promotes root growth. Uh, and that means that the grass can sustain everything that the winter has to throw it. Now, because the lawns here are used a lot by many, many visitors, we actually also do a couple of extra feeds through the season, a couple of extra high nitrogen feeds, just to actually give the grass a little bit more sustenance and a little bit more bulk. And we've got really good soil here, so the grass does grow well anyway, but it's actually a really good thing to do just to add something more to it. But even the grass here can sometimes suffer from drought and what you can see if you look down here a bit closer is that we've got a few brown patches that are starting to appear where we've not put enough water on and we do water some of these main lawns when we can to keep them lush. Now you shouldn't worry about turf when it comes to drought because it's exceptionally robust and if we do get a period of really dry weather what will happen is the grass will be the first thing that will start to go a little bit yellow, a little bit brown and crisp up but you needn't chuck tons and tons of water on it because as soon as we get some rain it will be one of the first things to recover and grass is actually very tough because predominantly much of the plant is underground and it sits quite close to the soil level. So don't worry too much if you can't give it lots and lots of water, but you'll see even here it's suffering from slight drought conditions. The other thing we do for these lawns is we cut with a cylinder mower and cylinder mowers you will know because you will see them used for tennis courts like at Wimbledon, you will see them used for football pitches and also for cricket as well. So they are used when you want to get a really lovely finish. And if you do want this sort of bowling green look, then a cylinder mower is a great thing to invest in. Ideally, eight to 10 blades on the cylinder with a roller will give you the most wonderful stripes and that quintessential English lawn. But if not, a rotary mower will do just the same thing. What I would say is cut regularly Many people I know that have lawns that sort of want to give them the best start they can, they often say, I'm leaving the grass to grow, I'm leaving it to, to grow out. Now you don't want to scalp it, you don't want to cut it too short, you want to remove about a third of the height of the grass at each cut. But there's nothing worse than really letting that grass grow too long. Grass and the sward, which is the green bit, need regular mowing, regular nipping. If you see even paddocks where horses and livestock have been, because they're constantly nibbling at the grass and keeping it low, the grass becomes very thick and the sward becomes very tight. And that also means that you get less weeds in as well. So regular mowing is a really important thing. And even if, like I say, you only want to take a third off, you might only be removing millimetres or so each week. It's a really important thing to do as a weekly schedule in the garden. If you've got heavy soil, it's probably worth spiking and you can use a garden fork for that or you can get in a proper aerator and that will mean then that when you've made these holes, you can add sharp sand, you can add um, a topsoil mix, something to open up little pockets of air to help your heavier soil. Try and be careful of trees overhanging as well. Now we've got hedges around this bit of lawn, but it doesn't affect the grass too much, but overhanging trees will cause shade and that will weaken the grass. And in turn, it will allow weeds in and it will allow moss in as well. And moss can be a big problem, but providing you keep the sward tight from all these things like regular feeding and regular mowing, and you don't cast too much shade, it should be really good. Now lawns are a vast subject, but if you just follow two or three of those points, you really make sure that your grass is greener. Hey. Hello, the grass is always greener. The grass is always greener. <laughs>